Um, to okay, hello guys. So I will start from the questions. How many of you have already used type of free headless solution in your project? Okay, nice. A few, I see. And how many of you have considered using a type of free headless solution? Okay. So in this pres in today's presentation, we'll introduce to, to our approach and solution for implementing type of free headless solution. But also we'll try to find answers to topic you may have wondered about. So before we begin, my name is Adam and I work as a team of the a lead of the team front-end developer in the Macopedia. And I'm also the co-creator of Type of Free Headless Solution, where I'm responsible for the front-end part. And uh, I am Łukasz Znajski. I am working as a backend, uh, lead backend developer in Macopedia. And I am author of Headless Extension and also a co-author of whole Type of Free Headless Solution. OK, so agenda for today is we'll talk briefly what the Type of Free Headless Solution is and what the headless CMS is. And we'll present you our uh, last work, real life examples and case studies. We'll briefly discuss the benefits for the agencies and the for, for developers. And we'd like to uh, discuss also our approach uh, to work with headless solutions. And uh, beside of the architecture, we'll try to make some demo to show you in the in life. So, our whole team mission, type of free headless mission, is enabled to uh, against is to be using in successful in headless and PWA, and this is the reason we are here today. So, what is the type of headless? For us, this is a complete solution that allow us to build website or mobile application or general application based on the type of free in the modern way. So, it based on the two things. The one is, the first one is the headless extension for type of free, which enable and switch traditional type of free website into JSON API. So your type of free website can act as a microservice or content repository. But the second thing is front end solution, which is totally separated from type of free. And this is a standalone front end application based on the Vue.js and Node.js. Uh, and is ready to work with our solution, with our API. So, and if you don't want to use the front-end solution, because you, may, you, you have already your own, then you can use only the headless extension to, mm, to get the JSON API. But uh, for us, this is a complete solution, and we promote and deliver it as a whole. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So what the headless CMS is. Uh, we can talk about the headless when it provides a backend for, for example, for content management in case of CMSs. But there is no output on the front end. So instead of the front end, instead of HTMLs, we got the JSON API. And uh, what is a decoupled CMS? Because we are much more closer to this subset of headless architecture. Mm, the couple CMS gives you also ready to work front end. So, beside of JSON API, we, we can get with our extension to type of free. You can also use the front end solution, which is ready to work with uh, our API. Uh, and this, uh, instead of the rendering on the front end, uh, because there is no output on the front end, so we have an API, then the API and content from type of free can be consumed by other uh, channels like mobile application or. Uh, e-commerce. So this is good for digital publishing. And on the diagram, you can see the type of free as a backend uh, with our headless extension, which switch type of free to deliver the API. And then we have a front-end application, our solution, which is based on NAX, which is ready to work, and different channels you can, where you can consume your API. Both packages are open source publicly available on the GitHub, so you can take it and implement for free. Uh, has been on the market for four years and has been tested for many companies and by us in many projects, so it's battle tested. It's growing out on popularity, uh, what makes this uh, extension one of the most uh, popular on the GitHub uh, when it comes to type of free. 
And the same is for the headless. Uh, and the front-end solution for the headless, the same package is also public on the GitHub. And yeah. OK, so uh, is it really enterprise ready? Uh, I would like to show you some uh, real life <coughs> uh, case studies on projects uh, which we implemented and also other agencies that send us uh, those uh, <coughs> implementations and to take a look. So uh, starting with Raven Group, uh, Raven Group is a leading uh, transport company in Europe and we implemented type of headless here with uh, a lot of different regions and language settings for them. So uh, Raven Group has uh, 16 regions and each of them has uh, at least two languages. And of course, um, there are also customizable uh, forms and editors are working independently on each region and can work on, on content without any, <coughs> any additional work. And <coughs> approach that we have here about uh, languages and setting up domains. So we have different regions based on uh, different subdomains and then each uh, subdomain can also have language Slack. So this approach is supported by type of by, by default, and uh, you can also have the same uh, approach to, to multilingual uh, setup in type of headless. Uh, we have also um, digital experience platform uh, called Carta Multisport, which is uh, pretty popular in Poland as this this company provides you a benefit card for employees that you can access basically every uh, sport uh, facilities in, in Poland. So this, uh, this implementation is based mostly on front-end login and a lot of content is behind. You need to log in in order to see uh, the content and <clears throat> the, they have uh, about one million users and uh, there, there is mobile uh, application and I identity here. Uh, the content is published to a lot more channels because they have also separate mobile application and we uh, share content to this application and also they use a lot of other services which uh, integrates with, with Type of Free here. As Type of Free is the uh, source of uh, truth uh, and the data here. You can also have one-to-one <clears throat> -one trainings. Uh, you can also personalize, personalize your diet here and a lot of uh, other stuff so such as gamification. And <clears throat> yeah, we are sharing this uh, API uh, for, so we build up a web application and this content that, that they are creating for blog and other stuff is used also in, <clears throat> in mobile applications. Then we have also Macmillan Education website, and this web website, uh, they, uh, this client had a lot of small CMSs, so we managed to migrate them all into one uh, type of free instance. And what's, uh, what's, inter what's interesting here? So they operate on, on 120 regions, and most of the, those regions uh, are, uh, are using content fallback. So <clears throat> you have a lot of the um, same pages for, for, for other regions, but for example, in catalog uh, is totally different for, for some regions. So uh, content differs per, per region and uh, we, have <coughs> uh, we have approach that uh, we use uh, language slacks here. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, we are mostly using content fallback here and we have a lot of marketing automation tools integrated into, into the system to get data from, from Zoom webinars, to generate certificates out of it and send it to users. It's, uh, it's another approach that type of free support out of the box and we support as well. And then we have MTD and Robomo uh, corporate portals. And we have two brands on, on one type of free instance with totally different approach to, to multi-language and uh, regions. So Robomo shares, uh, using, uh, Robomo is using Slack for region and language, and at the same time, uh, MTD is using totally separate domains for, uh, for every region and every language. So as you can see, uh, those uh, 
those approaches to those setups, uh, language setups, are supported by type of, type of free by default, but you can also achieve them in, in type of free headless without any additional work. Uh, they are working out of box. And then uh, we have some external uh, implementations that uh, other agencies send us on, on Slack channel that uh, they are using it and implementing uh, websites using uh, this solution. Okay, so what, are, what about the benefits for agencies and for developers of using our solutions? Based on our experience uh, and from our perspective, it's easier to recruit new developers when it comes to this approach. Mm, on Polish market, there is no possibility to hire type of free developers, especially front-end type of free developers who know type of free. But they know Vue.js, and thanks to the modern stack, and they, they, they want to work with the Vue.js and headless solution, it's higher and it's easier to hire them to and introduce them to our approach. Uh, yep. And the similar situation is to backend developers because uh, they know PHP, they know headless uh, architecture, but they don't know the type of free. So we can hire them and teach them in the meantime this type of free specific things. So it, it's much easier. And because of this, it's also mm, we can do faster onboarding because uh, they know the technologies we use. So we can onboard them and they are able to implement new features within two days after the hire instead of one month compared to the other, to the standard approach. Uh, because in the standard approach, we have to teach them the fluid things, type of, re, type of script, and this type of specific things. So because of the, this stack, this front-end stack, they, can able, and they are able to implement features very quickly. And type of free headless solution opens the new possibilities in terms of using type of free as a part of composable commerce. So, your type of free website can act as a microservice, as a content delivery, and can be a part of can be a part of a larger architecture or the larger project. This is not the only website right now. And we can achieve very consistent front end between the projects. Thanks to the Next.js application, they provide a very nice guidance how you should structure your project. So front-end developers know what to expect when they switch to the project where they never had work before. Uh, so they know what to expect because the project structure is uh, in, in project, each, each project the same. Uh, so this is, they are able to switch project in a few minutes and when it comes to, for example, um, reproducing the environment, for example, as me, as a front-end developer, I want to reproduce some bugs from production on my local environment. So in the standard way, I have to import a whole database from production and set up a whole environment on my local machine, but it takes a, it takes a time. So when, with our approach, you can switch your configuration in the front application, so which API you want to use, and it takes five seconds to use another uh, environment. And because of this, we have a faster and independent development. Uh, responsibilities in the team are much more divided and team works much more independent. Because of front-end, don't have to worry about how to resolve the um, things in type of free. They can focus on deliver better user experience on more intuitive, uh, intuitive uh, interfaces. Uh, because they don't have to struggle with type of free things. They know Vue.js, so they know how to do this on the front end. And the opposite situation is for the back end, because they don't have to struggle with HTML markups. They can focus on, the, on their work, on the, what they should return on the API, on the business logic. And all these things lead to more efficient work. Teams are much more independent, and these responsibilities are not mixed anymore. And it also leads the developers are more satisfied with their work. And this is the summary of what I was talking about. So let's go. OK. I would like to go through uh, type of headless capabilities at this moment. 
So <clears throat> our approach to headless CMS is a bit different that, that we see on the market because usually headless CMS is working just a content um, repository and front-end application builds up on, uh, on top of it and uh, front-end application stares how to, how to navigate on the web page and, and how this content is displayed. And on, in our approach, we still have the full control on, on the uh, editor side, so editor can change navigation, can change routing of, of whole uh, web page, add content, and <clears throat> everything stays on the editor control. Uh, there is no additional onboarding for editors. So uh, if you have uh, clients that uh, have editors that are uh, experienced with type of fee, with working with type of fee, there is no uh, additional uh, onboarding. They work the same way like they did before. <laughs> of course, we have in the translation and left to right support and right to right uh, as well. And I, as I showed you before on, on those real case studies, there is, of course, multi-language support, and all, all those uh, cases are, are handled by default. Same goes for multi-domain support. And also, no content migration is needed. So in case you have existing web page uh, using type of free and using uh, created on, on type of free, in case you would like to migrate to type of free headless, we are using the same tables, the same fields, and the same database that we used before. So you don't need to migrate your content at uh, any point. You just need to declare your own new rendering. And of course, it's possible to have step-by-step -step migration, as we are not, uh, we are not uh, extending or overriding type of free in a way that uh, doesn't allow you to use Fluid at the same time. You can set your uh, headless uh, JSON output to other page type and still have Fluid on the, on the, top, on, on the uh, top and build your application uh, aside and migrate it page, page by page. And of course, we have, uh, right now we have support for all core features and all uh, most popular extensions are supported. So we have workspaces, forms, front-end login, CEO, and Basically, every, every core, uh, core extension. And type of e, uh, yeah, can work as content API for multiple channels. So we have solution that we are building right now, uh, a composable commerce, which has this front -end application on, on, on top. And integrate type of e is working as uh, content uh, repository. And then we have Magento 2, which, which works for e-commerce in, in this solution. And because of that, uh, we have high performance, easy PW integration. Uh, we can cache th both, uh, those, uh, those uh, two applications separately, independent. And that brings very nice feeling to, to user, as user don't see really any, uh, any, any pay page uh, reload, because only body changes. And that's, that's just summary of, of those points, and we'll move to the next type of front-end. Okay, so when it comes to the front-end solution, we also have to support these functionalities, what we support on the headless extensions. So, of course, we have internationalization. Uh, one of the most important things here is mm, CEO. This is not single-page application anymore, so you don't have to worry about SEO, because this is fully server-side render page. There is a content for search crawlers, and they're able to uh, correct and crawl your page. Uh, like Lukas said, we have a feeling of instant loading. This is the much more better for the user experience. The pages are updated very quickly, and the content is visible for the user very quickly. Uh, our front-end uh, solution is ready to use with the API, like I said before, but you have also most of the core type of free fun uh, functionalities and content elements you can use. One thing you have to do is add some CSS style to make it prettier. Uh, and adopt, of course, your, adopt our solution to your project needs. Uh, and what is interesting here also that front-end application, one front-end application, or one process of node can handle multiple domains and multiple type of free instances. So you can Mm, manage one front-end for multiple instances by one application. And 
like Wukash said, like, like Wukash said before, it's easier to integrate PWA features like caching, uh, offline caching, and uh, give possibility to user to install your application on desktop or mobile. Okay, so when it's worth to implement type of headless, because not all use cases are good for uh, for this solution. So let's say you would like to have common user interface. So we are build, building composable commerce, and uh, your client would like to have the same front end for e-commerce, the same front end for blog. So if you want to keep it uh, uh, common and standardized, it's easier to, to have one front end application and one user interface to, to manage and to maintain than uh, split it into multiple uh, services. Or yeah, so when you, are, when you need common user interface, then I think it's a very good uh, use case of, uh, of type of headless. Also, when you would like to share your content across, across multiple platforms, because uh, when you are building your web page, you are actually building an API. So if you would like to share your content to your mobile application, then when, when you are done with website, you basically have your API so you can just plug in and use your content straight away. Also, when you have a lot of custom features, which requires like additional coding, so the project design is not really standard. You have some, uh, you can see that uh, you, you need some custom JavaScript handling, so some custom uh, uh, features, and then it's a good use case because building a website using view, view components will, will help you a lot in, in development, speed up dev development. Also, when it comes to external integrations, uh, when you have uh, to plug in a lot of uh, stuff, then uh, you can use the front-end application as, uh, for integrations in, instead of type of free. So uh, you can move some of them to, to front-end. Also, when you would like to have mobile application, then uh, when, when you're building website, uh, you can wrap, wrap it up uh, in, in mobile application and publish it to, to store. Okay, so uh, those are uh, when it's worth to implement type of headless, but uh, I can think of some of cases which, which are not really good for, for this uh, solution. So if you have very small uh, web page, like only some sub pages, it's not really big. It, it's, it has uh, some st uh, standard uh, user interface, and uh, then it might not be good to use uh, type of headless, because you have to know that uh, the infrastructure that you need to host is a bit more complicated and requires some maintenance. So yeah, in, in th those cases, you would, you would like to go with type of headless. Okay, so yeah, uh, I would like to discuss also workflow for developers, new workflow and uh, already known or workflow. Because we can say we have two approaches now. We can go with the standard way, which we are familiar with right now. So this is the way where Type of Free is solely responsible for the content and for the rendering the front end. So this is the kind of monolith way. But there are some issues. Uh, we can discuss it in a minute. Uh, there are some issues with development uh, responsibilities. They are mixed. But we have a headless way also. Um, which we want to also introduce you, how we resolve some issues with which we saw in the standard way. So let's take a look on the standard way. Uh, this is based on our experience, how it looks like in our company or what's look like. So at the first place, designer prepares some designs, uh, then the front-end developers can make this design and implement them into HTML mockups. And then, depends on the front-end developer's knowledge when it comes to Type of Free, he can implement these mockups into Type of Free or not. Depends on the knowledge. And based on our experience, this job was done by backend developers. So, backend developers, Type of Free developers had to implement HTML mockups into Type of Free. And then, as a result, we have a new website, of course. But uh, we noticed some issues with this approach because, like I said, development responsibilities are mixed. The backend developer had to struggle with HTML markups, so 
they don't want to do this based on our experience. Uh, front-end developers to start work on Type of Free, they have to set up whole environment on their local machines. It takes a time and resources. Uh, front-end developers usually don't know Type of Free templates, so it takes a time the, until they get familiar with it. And like I said, backend developers have to struggle with HTML. But what is imp most important for me here, the HTML mockups usually they are not reusable after mm, implement them to Type of Free because we hard coded some components to Type of Free, and then, then there is no reason to maintaining the HTML, HTML mockups. So all of these things, when it comes to responsibilities, may lead to team struggles. And we can tolerate these issues when it comes to small projects, small websites, small team, but uh, when it comes to something bigger and bigger teams, we see that all these things lead to team struggles. And what happened here? We have uh, different responsibilities, different roles in the team, and these people have different needs. For example, backend developers want to focus on mm, business logic. They don't worry about HTML, about the front end. So they want to focus on the data they should return, not, uh, not on the HTMLs. Front end developers want to focus on delivering better user experience, more intuitive interfaces. And they know how to do this, but sometimes they are limited by type of free. Maybe they don't know how to do something in type of free, so they, want to, they don't want to struggle with backend as opposite. And we have a product designers. They want to keep their designs consistent uh, across the project. So no offense, but when backend developers touch the HTML markup, then it be compromised. Uh, when it comes to when, when, it, when it comes to design and consistent of the designs, and we have a project managers, and they want to see changes and new feature, and also customer want to see new feature as soon as possible, but the standard process takes a time. I think uh, we have to we have to wait for the front end, for the mockups, for the back end, and then the feature mm, is on the production and can be tested, but. We can imagine that we have in the team a lot of different roles, for example, QA, and we could imagine they, they could test our work earlier, on earlier stage. For example, they could test UI components or front-end on earlier stage, but they can't because they have to wait also for the whole process. And what can we do about it? We can split and break the monolith. We can break a monolith and at the same time, we can divide the responsibilities. So this diagram shows our approach to headless projects and any kind of headless project. Uh, in this case, this is type of free. But we try to keep this approach consistent in our company. So we have divided this process into separated parts. And most important thing here is each of these process can be done at the same time. What makes the work uh, of the team much more asynchronous, then don't have to wait for each other, and this work can be tested on earlier stage. Why? Let's see. We have a UI repository at the first place, and the responsibility of the UI repository is delivering the design system. And this design system includes UI components, which are, are mostly dump components, what means that they are um, agnostic. They are not related to any backend, their responsibility is visual front-end aspect based on some data they got, but they are not aware about this data and how this data will be provided. And inside of this repository, we have also Storybook, and this is the great tool to document your components in interactive way. So that means that you can publish whole Storybook tool on some website for, as an external application, for your customer, for your QA, so they can test UI components on earlier stage. They can test these components with different uh, source of data, so they can look how it behaves, so they can uh, find some bugs on earlier stage. And then we have a type of repository, which with our extension provide API, so backend developers works there on uh, delivering the API and the content for front-end application, and the 
second repository in the middle is the one, one point of synchronization of our work. So at this point, we consume data from type of free and sharing this data with UI components. So the front-end application is solely responsible for mapping data from type of free and, uh, and shows the UI components from design system. And from my perspective, the best thing here is that this part, part of the job can be tested earlier. And the, and the responsibilities are much more divided, I think. Uh, so this is the summary of what I was talking about. The development responsibilities are more divided. Teamwork is more asynchronous. And developers can focus on their real responsibilities. They don't have to worry with, um, you know, they don't have to struggle with things they are not responsible uh, with, for. Okay, and <clears throat> I would like to go through our ecosystem as uh, we are working with type of headless for uh, like four years like, right now. So we created a bunch of uh, repositories and tools uh, along with type of headless. So this graph shows you um, type of headless organization on GitHub. And uh, so all of our uh, repositories are publicly available on GitHub and you can take it uh, for free. So it starts with type of headless, uh, which has this core extension support for, uh, for those uh, 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 workspaces, CEO, uh, front-end login, forms, and redirects. And then we have some community extensions. So some of them, we have support for uh, third-party extensions with, uh, with headless mode. So uh, we main maintain support for extension solar, news, power mail, grid elements, and container. Those are supported by us. And the rest of them, and there are some guys on GitHub cre that created organization called Friends of Type of Free Headless, and they are man maintaining headless bootstrap package, headless uh, TT address, and key search. And I saw that they created also uh, some kind of React implementation of Type of Free Headless. So um, there are other guys that are working on, on this solution. And then we have also PWA demo. And uh, we will show you this demo actually later, but it's, uh, that, that's a repository. If you, if you would like to s uh, look at how this uh, solution works and how it uh, feels like, because it has a type of free with some uh, basic database, uh, some files and some content, and also along with front end application. So if you have DDEV, then you can kickstart your, your demo in like five minutes using one command. So it's very good to, if you, if you want to play with it, it's the best way to, to get started. And then uh, we have Nux type of free, which provide, uh, provides Vue.js components for, for all type of free content elements, uh, also has layout, layout supports, provides this server-side rendering for your CEO, and uh, is multi-language. Uh, okay, so under this uh, URL address, there is whole organization. And then we have headless extension. And uh, I can tell you that uh, yesterday uh, we released uh, version 12 uh, uh, release candidate uh, because uh, I, I think that now we have uh, version 12.2. And uh, uh, headless in version 4 uh, release candidate is ready to work with uh, with uh, newest version. And actually, we are. We, we, we are a verified extension, so we need to keep up with every uh, long-term support version that uh, is released by Type of Free. Uh, here is a front-end uh, repository of Max Type of Free solution. And then we have PWA demo, which uh, can, you can kickstart your uh, Type of Free headless in five minutes. Okay, and I would like to go through some <coughs> architecture overview. Uh, so, starting with this, uh, what we saw before, so headless is uh, just a content uh, repository for, for front-end application. Uh, this brings us uh, several uh, benefits. So, starting with greater flexibility, uh, for us is uh, 
You can work with type of free uh, with headless extension. And then if you, if you would like to switch your front end tool, you don't like Nux or, or uh, any, any other thing, then you can just uh, change uh, tool by tool. You don't have to change the whole solution at all. You can just, just change uh, some parts of it and uh, use any tool that you want. Uh, also, it's easier to scale those applications because they are separated. You can scale them independently. And it's easier to find uh, those bottlenecks. And it's very easy to handle and traffic spikes. And then we have improved performance, which uh, uh, because of few layers, add additional few layers, few, few layers of cache uh, that can help you uh, with, uh, with, uh, with performance. Uh, we have better separation co of concerts, and this is actually <coughs> um, yeah, working front end and back end developers. They are working on separate uh, repositories, on separate projects. Front end guys have the uh, front end repository with next type of free, and back end is working only on back end. Uh, backend uh, site. Uh, we have easier integration with third party systems. Uh, thanks, to, thanks, to, thanks to Next, we don't have to keep everything in, in type of free. We can uh, move some integrations on the front end. Uh, it helps a lot. And also, uh, there is better user experience as this page is not reloaded at all. There is no, uh, there is this instant feeling of, of switching pages. Okay. Okay, and we had uh, more theoretical slides, but uh, I think the best way to show some aspect of this application, of this solution, well, you will see when we show a demo, demo, but, uh, okay, one day second. This is it. Okay, so, mm, can we clone it? One second, can we clone it? Because... Okay, so okay, so I will be looking at this way. So this is what you can get when you set up the DDEV project, uh, which is which you can get on our GitHub. And I will show you two paths because on the slides we had a diagram who which shows uh, the request and response flow of this application because it's crucial to understand how the front end, which is separated from the type of frame, uh, communicate with the back end and how it looks like. So the first situation is when we open that page the first time. So user want to visit our page, so he put some address in the browser and click enter so I can simulate with the refresh button. But what I want to mention and discuss is that this is fully server-side render page. So in the source of that page, you can find all content from type of free, which is responsible. Here is a lot of CSS, but here we have navigation, which is, of course, fetched from type of free. We have a content, which is responsible for content elements, so this page is fully visible for, SE, for search crawlers and SEO aspects are okay here, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so this is the first uh, view we got. We have a HTML, which is fully server-side rendered. Of course, browser has to fetch some JavaScript files, uh, maybe some CSS or not, and some images. So this is the kind of situation we are familiar with. When you want to open the type of free page and the server is responding with the HTML, with everything you need and browser need to render that page. But the situation dramatically changed when I'm currently on the page and I want to visit some other subpages. Then you see that there is no fully reloaded the page. Browser don't have to do this. Uh, instead of this, you can see this content very quickly. And you can see that we are calling the API. So for example, I wanted to see the About Us page. Then the front application, when I'm clicking on the, on the link here, 
The front-end application prevents the natural behavior of the browser, so there is no this reloading stuff. But instead of this, front-end application calls API, type of free API, which is provided by type of free and our extensions. So we call the About Us page on the API, and as a result, we have a full um, all information related to this page. Yeah? So we have a content array, which is responsible for um, content elements for this page. We have so we see some appearance setup. Everything you can set up uh, on page level in Type of Free. You have some meta information, which is also um, provided in the source as a uh, meta tags, which are needed to the CEO. CEO. So everything is here, so you don't have to worry about the CEO. Uh, and what's more, uh, so I was switching these pages, and I see only the front application calls and fetches the page data. But what about the, this kind of navigation, which is not refreshed when I change the pages? We decided to fetch this. Uh, consistent data, like mobile uh, navigation, uh, which is uh, the same for each page, we can assume, of course. Uh, so we have decided to fetch this initial data. Uh, this is how we call it, initial data. We have decided to fetch this initial data only on the first, uh, on the first connection, when the user wants to visit the page for the first time, then under the hood, node, fetch the um, content from API, and display here. So this is kind of an optimization because where we were working on bigger project who delivers 100 uh, regions and languages, then fetching uh, this language configuration and menu for all the, all the sub page would be not uh, good when it comes to optimization. So we have decided to fetch this initial data once when user want to visit the page for the first time. And of course, there are some situations you want to refresh your navigation. So for example, I want to change the language and I would like to see the navigation, which is translated. So I can switch the language and you can see the initial data was fetched also. So this is the specific kind of endpoint, which is available on the type 834. And it provides the, like I said, the consistent data. So in this case, we have some navigation, uh, which we render here. Uh, we have a language configuration and some information for the user, is it login or not. And in this, in this endpoint, or on this endpoint, we can store and provide more information, which, is cons which, is, which are consistent to your all subpages. And that's it. Uh, okay. So like you see, when we change the language, the content and navigation is also refreshed. So you can play with that. You can fetch our repository and uh, run the DDEV project. OK. OK. <clears throat> and moving to what we do. So we develop and maintain headless extension, next type of free, and tools around it. Uh, we support open source community. Um, we are available on Slack, and if you, uh, if you want to contact us, drop us a line and we will uh, help you. Uh, we provide also training for front and back end DevOps and best practices for, for, for headless solutions, as a lot, of, uh, a lot of paths and problems were actually solved by us uh, when we are developing uh, those uh, solutions. And uh, yeah, we are focusing on helping uh, agencies and supporting them. And we also provide early access program for Next Type of Free and uh, Viewed Free and Next Free. And what we are working on, and we are working on right now on finding the best way to create from uh, create mobile application out of Type of Free headless. So we would like to have some kind of uh, automatic tool that will help us. Uh, in creating this out of box, because uh, right now it uh, requires some additional work to do. Um, we have some uh, headless and mask extension integration to, to speed up development of content elements, because uh, with mask, uh, you can generate your uh, content elements using type of free panel, and it's a lot faster 
then we have some uh, repository which can help us to export them into TypeScript templates. And um, we have also uh, planning to, uh, to release some teams. And right now we are working on e-commerce integration with Magento 2. And uh, we think also about front-end editing to make things uh, for editors easier, easier to, to be able to render a whole page and edit those uh, content elements directly on, on page. Okay, and yeah, we, we, we have uh, interaction workshop uh, which, uh, uh, which can help you start the development and more in-depth uh, trainings uh, which uh, handles back and top parts uh, differently uh, separate and front end separate, uh, also online and on-site. And what we encourage you to do, so uh, please try out the SPWA demo as it's very, very uh, nice way to, to check it out and see if you like it, if you, if you would like to work with it. Uh, yeah, give us give us some feedback and follow us on type of headless Twitter. And if you have some question, please go ahead. I'm working only with JSON. I don't set up my front end at all. So uh, for rendering content elements and X base, the debugging is the same like before. So if you need to send some, you know, I don't know, you have X base model that, you, and you want to create, send some form and create some models on your, on your site, then you can just send your request like you did with Postman and debug it the way, way you did before. Because but the additional question, what kind of debugging you mean? You want to see these changes on the front end, or you want to debug your back end? Okay, so the debugging in PHP and in the type of is the same, and. Uh, for some projects, for example, for this Carta Multisport, where you have this login section and authorization section, we actually set up front end on the same uh, local environment. So, in case you would like to, you know, click through the page and uh, don't see only JSON. So, yeah, you, you can set up your front end, connect to your local API, and still be able to work with uh, like rendered page. But for me, usually 90% of times, I don't have any front end at all. So I, I work only with JSON, and uh, it's, it's uh, enough for, for the backing. So you just open JSON? Yeah, I, I have like a Chrome extension that allows me to, to see you know, structured tree of, of this JSON, so I can just look up if my uh, element responds what I want uh, this element to, to have. Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, if you can implement yes. Machine, does it search JSON or the database? Okay, so uh, with Solar, we are using it like uh, with Core. So you index, uh, index your uh, tables and your content like you did before. It's the same. And then we just overwrite Fluid templates to provide JSON uh, to front end instead of rendering, you know, fl uh, HTML directly. So. It's the same as uh, as it was before. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if 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 you would like to for pages, for, for example, for pages content, then it's a good idea to you know store whole JSON in in this. But in general, when it comes to solar integration, uh, we try to keep it. Uh, you know, every every integration we want to keep it as close to core as possible. So don't overwrite, don't X class a lot of things. Just keep them. You know. Uh, the same day like they were before. Thank you, Thank you guys. <laughs>